There were doors all around the hall, but they were all locked, and when Alice had been up and down each side, trying every door, she walked sadly down the middle, wondering how she was ever going to get out. Suddenly she came upon a three-legged table, all made of solid glass. There was nothing on it except a golden key, and Alice's first thought was that it belonged to one of the doors in the hall. But alas, neither the locks were too large, or the key was too small. But at any rate, it wouldn't open any of them. However, the second time round, she came across a low curtain she hadn't noticed before and behind it was a little door about 15 inches high. She tried the little golden key in the lock, and to her great delight it fitted. Alice opened the door and found it led to a small passage, not much bigger than a rat hole. She knelt down and looked along the passage into the loveliest garden you ever saw. How she longed to get out of that dark hall and wander along those beds of bright flowers and those cool fountains but she couldn't even get her head through the doorway. And even if my head would go through, thought poor Alice, it would be little use without my shoulders. Oh, I wish I could shut up like a telescope. I think I could, if I only knew how to begin. For you see, so many out of the way things had happened lately that Alice began to think that very few things were really impossible. There seems to be no use in waiting by the little door, so she went back to the table, half hoping she might find another key on it, or at any rate a book of rules of people shutting up like telescopes. This time she found a small bottle on it. Which certainly wasn't there before, said Alice, and round his neck was a label with the word Drink Me, beautifully print printed on it in large letters. Well, it's all very well, say, drink me, but the wise little Alice was not going to do that in any hurry. Oh, no. I'll look first, she said, and see if there's anything marked poison or not. For she had read several nice little histories about children who had got burnt or eaten up by wild beasts and many other unpleasant things all because they couldn't remember the simple rules their friends had taught them, such as a red-hot poker will burn you if you hold it too long, and that if you cut your finger very deeply with a knife, it usually bleeds. And she'd never forgotten, if you drink much from a bottle marked poison, it will most certainly disagree with you sooner or later. However, this little bottle wasn't marked poison, so Alice ventured to taste it, and found it was very nice. It had, in fact, a sort of a mixed flavour of cherry tart, custard, pineapple, roast turkey, toffee, and hot buttered toast. So she finished it off. What a curious feeling, said Alice. I must be shutting up like a telescope. And so it was indeed. She was now only ten inches high. Her face brightened up at the thought that she would now be the right size to be going through the little door into the lovely garden. First, however, she waited a few minutes to see if she was going to shrink any further. She felt a little nervous about this, for it might be the end, you know, said Alice. It might going out altogether, like a candle. I wonder what I should be like then. She tried to fancy what a flame of a candle would be like after it had blown out, for she could not remember ever seeing such a thing. After a while, finding nothing much more happened, she decided to go into the garden once more. But alas, to poor Alice, when she got to the door, she found she'd forgotten the little gold key and that she went back to the table for it. She found she couldn't possibly reach it. She could see it quite plainly through the glass. She tried her best to climb up on one of the table legs, but it was too slippery. And then she tired herself out by trying. The poor little thing sat down and cried. Oh, there's no use in crying like that, said Alice to herself quite sharply. I advise you to leave off this minute. She generally gave herself a good advice, though she very seldom followed it. But sometimes... She scolded herself so severely it had to bring tears to her eyes. And once she tried, remember trying to box her own ears while having cheated herself in a game of croquet she was playing against herself. 
for this curious child was very fond of pretending to be two people. But it's no use now, thought poor Az, to pretend to be two people. Why, there's hardly enough of me left to make one respectable person. Soon her eyes fell on a small glass box that was lying under the table. She opened it and found in it a small cake in which the words eats me were beautifully marked in currants. Well, I'll eat it, said Alice, for if it makes me bigger, I will reach the key, and if it makes me smaller, I will creep under the door, so either way I get into the garden, so I not care which happens. She ate a little, and said anxiously to herself, Which way? Which way? Holding her hand at the top of her head to feel which way it was growing. She was quite surprised to find that she remained the same size, to be sure. This generally happens when one eats cakes. But Alice got so so much into the way of expecting nothing out of the way things to happen, it was quite dull and stupid for life to be going in their common way. So she set up and soon finished off the cake. But remember, don't eat but don't drink from bottles that hasn't got any marks on them. And do look out for the word poison, because not all of us are like Alice. But I hope you enjoyed this little story and my little drawing, ink drawing of the poor dead bird who didn't follow the advice on the bottle marked poison. See you tomorrow.